All right, everyone, Maxine Waters is the more aggressive version of Elizabeth Warren. Like, Warren will get hot under the collar and red in the face and, and say weird shit sometimes when antagonized. But Maxine Waters is probably the most easily antagonized politician currently in in federal office in the United States. Uh, she got into a tizzy with a Trump supporter with regards to border security and, and said in no uncertain terms, if you believe in building a wall, you're unpatriotic. This reminded me so much of Clinton's deplorables comment. This is exactly the fucking shit that fucks the Democratic Party up the ass without lubrication on a regular basis. They have a handful of people in their party that continuously drag them down. Now the Republicans, some of the people that were the Republican equivalent are gone. Like Paul Ryan, no longer really active in politics. Boehner, you know, who basically was a crybaby. He's too busy farming cannabis, actually. I think he's probably high as a kite all the time, thinking about what might have been if only he hadn't had to rule over an obstructionist Congress that wouldn't even work with him half the time. Oh my God, even my own party won't listen to me. Fuck this shit. And he goes off to get high for the rest of his life. Um, uh, John McCain, arguably, especially with regards to foreign intervention. Although once he died, he was just an angel and everyone loved him. And they criticized me when I said I'm glad that he's gone. And I thought it was funny. Uh, and some of these people go, just w wait until his uh, corpse is cold before you criticize them. Oh, he didn't do that to criticize people overseas in the Middle East. He loved to slaughter them. Fuck it. Yeah, lots of cold blood around in the deserts because of people like John McCain. I don't give a fuck. As far as Maxine Waters, though, she she goes like on these crazy rants. And set, like she says stupid shit <laughs> all the time. And it probably other than the dedicated far left, I mean ideologically more overlap with her. She's further to the left than even like a Warren or something. She's pretty close to Bernie Sanders territory. She's like half a step from AOC maybe. Uh, she's in that group. The core fans that are like impeach Trump, tear down this wall border security is racist or something. Those people love it when she says stuff like this. Gets them really, really whipped up, and she's a credit to the party as far as that, oddly enough, very young voting block tends to be, uh, getting them whipped up into a frenzy. The problem is that the neoliberals control the Democratic Party, so when you see the far left saying, we will get rid of Trump, we will impeach him, they were swearing up and down they would impeach him. Yeah, impeachment's not just on the table. We will impeach, we will remove, we will kick all the Republicans out. Hey, you know, hail Stalin, basically. It can't be delivered, though, because the people that actually fund the party don't want to do those things. They just want to talk about it. It makes for great news. I mean, it's a very tabloid stuff. Uh, sells really, really well. We're basically living in, in Survivor, the political climate right now. Survivor, D.C. That's basically what it boils down to. People like Maxine Waters, they bring in the, good, the high audience totals because, like, oh, you got to see this show. Look at this psycho on here saying crazy shit. The problem is everyone around them is negatively impacted. Because if I'm Pelosi, it's like when Pelosi had to scoff at the Green New Deal. That's because her constituents largely don't want such a thing. Because they're, oddly enough, more sane. She's sitting there saying, well, we're going into an election. We kind of need the business Democrats at the very least. We need the center leftists, the corporate Dems. They need to be on board. And this is really starting to scare them. Some of this far left rhetoric. Tone it down. But Maxine Waters is rogue. She's not going to tone it down. She's basically got her position for life. Uh, because of the, the constituency that she happens to run with, um, she doesn't have to care. And so she can say crazy off-the-wall shit because ultimately the Democrats typically are a circle-the-wagon party. They're, they're more highly organized because they're more, they love centralization. The Republicans go it alone more. They're more independent in their campaign style. There's less cohesion. This has, though, begun to break down, I think, over the last couple of years. You're seeing the Democrats starting to fracture as a party, and so you can never get all of the wagons circled. While circling the wagons only makes as much sense as the tightness of those wagons being circled to form a defensive perimeter. If you get a bunch of gaps in it, it's not really a defensive perimeter anymore, is it? If anything, the enemy just funnels in, fucking charges in, and then goes haywire and burns the wagons. Uh, the Republicans are getting better although it's not full cohesion. But it's more they're on an even keel now, I would say, in Maxine Waters. Uh, you know, number one example, I think, of the kind of off-the-wall weird rhetoric you typically have been getting from the Democrats in the wake of a disastrous 2016 that they still haven't fully come to terms with. They still can't fully understand, I think, why they lost. And I think that part of it, I think the biggest part of it was alienating groups with stuff like the deplorables coming. What is Maxine Waters doing? You're un you, you are not a patriot if you believe in this pr pro uh, proposal. Well, that's funny. You and every other Democrat backed similar proposals as little as 10 years ago. 
Obama made speeches that sound almost exactly... Trump could literally get a transcription of Obama speaking about the border from 2007, 2008. And he could mimic it line by line. And they would, and, and they would call him racist for making the speech. I wish he would do something like this. He should release a campaign ad where the exact text is lifted directly from an Obama speech or a Clinton speech on the border. Oh, you know, the illegals, and you must come in here legally. We can't allow this to keep happening. B stuff that he said. Obama and all of these. Bush, the Republicans have said it too. Lift it word for word. Put it in a campaign ad. Let people go run roughshod over it. Say, well, what a racist. And then tweet out and say, oh, that, you know, here's the link to the speech. It wasn't me that originally made it, you fucking dumbasses. Oh, that would be epic trolling. And you know people would swallow hook, line, and sinker. Look, because things spread instantaneously, because 10,000 people will retweet it in the first 10 minutes, it would already be viral, uh, you know, long before all the, all the neoliberals go and say, no, 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 don't, don't act offended. It's a trick. It's a trap. <laughs> It'd be funny. Oh, I hope he does. Stuff. And that's that would be Trump's, you know, sort of MO within politics to do something like that. Yeah, a little hint for the Trump campaign. Trust me, lift shit from other politicians, try to pass it off as Trump's words, knowing it'll bait the left into an angry response, and then inform them of the actual source. You know, you do that for a million different issues. Maybe taxation, like, oh, you know, uh, tax reform, this, and then point out, oh, I actually did that, and now you're acting like it's a bad thing. But it was a Democratic proposal 20 years ago. And then they'll have to talk about how times have changed, and then people will realize how un un fucking hinged they are. Of course they could, literally, just watch Maxine Waters. The Democratic Party has a lot of, of weirdos in it, whereas the Republican Party, some of the weirdos sort of migrated out, and a lot of them became like never Trumpers, like, like a Jeff Flake. Some of the, the corrupt, sort of cronyistic neocons are gone. Um, some of the early wave, like hyper-religious Tea Partiers are gone, except from certain red districts. They got washed out within a couple of elections. Now you've got a bunch of Trump loyalists that are in. Trump's people, the people that he was backing over their challengers, what was it, four to one, won their uh, elections within the Republican uh, system before the last midterms? And some of these people won, you know, in the general. On the state level, he's got even more support. Trump's got an enormous support base. You know, people don't realize exactly how much infrastructure he has cobbled together in the for form of two years in which he barely paid a fucking red cent of any corporate money because he spurned it and went self-funded mode grassroots support stuff like that and it's again it's that disorganized strategy it's it's sort of like the the democrats are the latter day like the byzantines or something build their walls man the halls and shit like that they've got you know the standardized armor and spears and and things but they're waning that that organization is beginning to break down because of internal problems meanwhile the fucking barbarians are at the gate you know wearing maga hats and they've just invented the cannon, and so, you know, there's a little bit of a problem. Uh, and Trump is basically that cannon. When you think about it, he has managed to derange the Democrats into abandoning what used to be a fairly sensible, reasonable platform, all things considered on many issues, one that was palatable, into a party that has become totally hyper-partisan. The Republicans have barely budged off of the platform that they've had for some time, with the exception of border security that Trump's going all in on. With that exception and kind of on gun control, they're basically still that center-right movement, a little bit more populist on immigration. It's not a major move. The Democrats, meanwhile, in the course of half of a decade or less, have gone from a party that was relatively similar, which was also at some times a criticism of both of these parties, to one that's gone way out to lunch. A bunch of self-proclaimed socialists and socialist light, aka social democracy, which is socialism. It's just a different word that they use to try to rebrand themselves. Trust me, they'll be trying to force that down your school kids' throats probably pretty soon. Uh, these people have, have gone crazy. Oh, yeah, raise the marginal tax rate to 70%. Yes, that would have been considered a mild, reasonable proposal five years ago. No, even Bernie Sanders would have been fucking crazy enough to do that right before an election. Are you fucking nuts? You fucking high? No, I, why am I asking this question? Of course you are. <laughs> yeah, of course. Weed is legal in D.C. I don't think that it's just tequila that Miss Cortez is uh, actually using at this point. That's about all. Peace out.